Welcome to Martin Survival. Today we're going to go over bows, arrows, quivers, and more. Stick around, we got a great show coming up. All right, folks, so I want to welcome you back. And uh, we're actually going to shoot a bow that I just got off the tillering tree last night. Uh, this is a red oak flat bow. I have a few sinew patches running down it. And uh, I'll go over that here in just a bit. But some of you guys have wondered about the reflexed uh, sinew-backed yew wood bow. And it's still alive. It's still shooting very fast, very good. And um, it has uh, it successfully survived. So still have that bit of a twist in the limb. That's okay. It's still doing well. And then I've also modified it just a little bit. I ran some true oil on the belly, so we sealed that up. And then I also added an additional backing of prairie rattler skins. You can see how good that looks. It adds a lot of character to the bow. But not only that, during monsoon months here in Arizona, we don't want the moisture affecting the sinew. So the snake skins actually help aid us in protecting the sinew. I also just leather wrap the handle. So yeah, it's still uh, still shooting good. We do have that vertical crack on the belly. Darn near from tip to tip. But that's quite normal, again, with a sinew-backed bow pulled into reflex like this. So moving forward, some of you guys have asked about the quivers that I like to use, and I like to typically stick with two different types of quivers. I like to use a yucca stock and in this case I like to use agave. So this is just a dried and seasoned agave stock that I went ahead and I sealed. And everything on this stock is natural. Even from crafting it I used all natural materials. It's fast, it's easy, and they're long lasting if you do them right. And they work quite well. If you guys are interested in learning how to make a traditional Southern California style quiver, I do have a video on my YouTube channel. It's actually a series, so I teach you guys step by step in how to do so. And then you can apply that knowledge to your own skill set and get out there and try what works in your environment. But um, again, these things are just very quick. They're very easy to make and they're damn durable out in the field. I've caught this thing on all sorts of stuff, cat claw, acacia, mesquite thorns, palo verde, barrel cactus, saguaros, uh, you name it, and this thing just still holds up. Uh, the only thing that I've had to replace, quite honestly, and it's really for decoration, is the turkey feathers. The arrows that I use, these are just commercial arrows that I bought online. Now, I have used the traditional arrows that I make, and they will kill without a doubt. I'm very confident in them. Um, it just, I put a lot of work into them, so I like to, I like to replicate them and then I'll end up displaying them either at the local college up here at the library or a museum or even at home. Now this right here is a red oak flat bow. And I just got this thing off the tillering tree last night. It's 55 pounds at 29 inches. It starts to stack around 30 inches so I don't push it. I go about 29 inches and I still get a lot of power and a lot of speed in this bow. I have a B50 string on this and then <clears throat> I also have a bit of thickness in the handle so again that's non-working and then our tips are non-working either. So our working part of the limb has a really nice tiller right outside of the fades. The brace height is around six or seven inches. I haven't measured. Usually I go from the bottom of my fist to the top of my thumb. Tiller looks really nice on this. Another thing that I did is I noticed as I was starting to work this piece of oak is there was some check marks and check marks are usually from moisture releasing too fast out of the wood, but that is fixable. So what I do is I create a liquid plug and a liquid a liquid plug excuse me is created with sandpaper and super glue so what I'll do is I'll sand over that crack or that check mark and then I'll run super glue inside of it 
and then sand it down more. So I'm just creating a plug and that helps bind it together. But I usually like to make sure I'm safe. I'd rather be safe than sorry. I don't want this back blowing out on me. So I ended up running a few sinew patches down it. So sinew with warm hide glue and it's held together quite well. So what I want to do is I have my target just off to the left of me. I want to string this up and show you how well this thing performs.
And there we have it once again, the traditional red oak bow. I'm very pleased with this thing. It shoots very hard, very fast, and it performs very well out here. So what do I plan on doing with this thing? Well, I wanna shoot it more. I wanna shoot it anywhere from 250 to 300 times before I'm certain that this thing has in fact survived. And if it does, God willing, I will seal the belly with true oil. And then I plan on either doing some artwork on the back or backing it with snake skins. Once again, just like that you would bow. And of course, wrap the handle with leather. And uh, this thing will be complete after that. So there we have it. All right, folks. So that is just about going to wrap things up for me today. I do appreciate you joining me for this video. I also want to encourage you to check out some of my other videos regarding primitive skills, bushcraft, and survival skills alike. Off to my right here, I do have a couple different videos. The first one, we teach you step-by-step -step in how to make a traditional hunting arrow with a removable foreshaft. Right below that, we show you how to make a traditional Southern California style arrow quiver. I do think you'll enjoy those series as well as I enjoyed making them. Furthermore, I want to invite you over to my website, that's martinsurvival.com. We have specialty gear giveaways, we have blogs and articles, a great discussion board. We also have specialty classes where you'll find us teaching primitive fire, bow making, arrow making, tracking and trapping. Uh, atlatl and dart making, primitive pottery, basketry, and so much more. Just a plethora of different skills. Everything is presented in a hands-on experience as well as a historical context. So again, that's martinsurvival.com. I thank you for your support and we'll see you in the next video.